This is a time of year for a select few of us that is holy. The woods and forests around us are starting to come alive. There are a lot of flowers starting to bloom, such as uh, bloodroot, trout lilies, um, bluebells, and many others. Uh, there are a plethora of early edible plants also growing, such as ramps. Love me some ramps. Uh, those are wild leeks, if you don't know. Fiddleheads, garlic mustard, and yes, even dandelion. Dandelions are edible, and they are completely edible, and they are super food. So go out, eat some dandelion leaves in your salads, make pesto, a lot of good stuff. There is a sign, though, that some of us wait for, and that is the lilacs to bloom. What does this mean? Well, it can only mean one thing. It means that the morel mushrooms are popping. These beautiful, delicious things. I'm going to show you how to paint them better. Because when I see people paint them, they don't get all this intricate detail in them. Hey YouTube, I am Doug Pexa, and I'm an artist who loves to forage and cook. Today I'm going to show you how to paint better looking morel mushrooms. First off, I'm a part of several uh, mushroom art groups on Facebook, so I see a lot of mushroom art, and there are a lot of awesome works on these pages. I'm not going to say the rest of them are bad. It is what it is. Sometimes amateurish, sometimes it's rushed. Sometimes people just don't know how to make it look more realistic. And I'm not saying realistic as in photorealism, if I wanted that, I would just take a photo of it, be done, you know, edit it, make it look cool. But young and new artists don't always know how to make uh, something more realistic while keeping it painterly or how to pull out the subtle details that will make the painting look better. When I was coming up with this idea, I thought it would be cool. If I just did an abstract painting of a close-up of the morale to really get into the essence of those little craggy, craggy, wrinkly things. By this, I mean really studying the forms of the morale itself without worrying about the outside shape, the nick of space. And all those good stuff. It sure turned out abstract by the end, even though it was fairly true to the subject. So let's start. Go over to the desk and let's get painting. Oh, just want to say one other thing. If you're a forager and you want me to paint one of your finds, I can do that. Just contact me here or DM me, um, make a comment on any of my social medias and I'll get back to you with rates and availability. Um, I just need a photo um, and we can do anything you want with it. The best way to paint or draw better morale mushrooms or anything for that matter is to use a reference. This is the one I am using. It is one of my photos I took a few years back. Feel free to use it as a reference too. I will post a link in the description so you can work on your own version. That'd be pretty cool. What I see as the biggest problem with painting morels is the lack of detail in the crevices or wrinkles. A lot of novices will paint them as mostly black holes on the surface or should I say on a surface. So it almost looks like they painted all the high parts and then just 
painted little round dark areas so it just doesn't look right I mean it kind of looks like like a cartoon of what a morale mushroom should look like a visual symbol almost it is not a flat surface with holes all over it it is ridges and folds where some of the high ridges fall into the crevices these holes have little mounds on the sides of the ridge, ridge lines and have others that come up and meet the high points there are a lot of layers. Here are a couple examples of what I mean about the cartooning of the morale mushroom, especially in respects of the crevices, the holes, and the concave parts. The last one was mine. I was trying to get uh, this effect, and it turns out that this will be a great underpainting for a painting I will finish later. Probably make another uh, time lapse of it. So subscribe if you want to see how I finish this painting. As I paint this, I realize that these crevices are a lot like the human ear. There are a lot of levels and, and creases and areas that go from high to low points, kind of like pathways to the deeper parts. It also reminds me of drawing drapery fabric, like in still lives or the clothing in a portrait. The painting starts off with a simple sketch in paint, putting in where the dark areas are, and the geography of the elements using the reference as the base. Feel free to move away from the reference when something isn't working, but still use the reference to learn what your invented area needs to look right. Really see where the highlights are, where the midtones, and where the darkest areas are, and get and get it filled in like you almost are doing a paint by numbers. As you work, correct the areas that look wrong, whether it's wrong from the reference or just doesn't look right. After you're happy with the landmarks, kind of the more graphic-y vibes, start going back into the midtones and work on making them, uh, making the edges more subtle. This adds depth. I like to richen my colors up and go outside the actual color a bit. Is that a brownish yellow? Make it a little more orange or more red as you push, as you push into the darks or golden as you head into the lighter areas. Also make sure you correct things as you go. Nothing should ever be static when you're painting. You can push and pull. I say that a lot, I know, but pushing and pulling the paint, the darks, the midtones, and the lights. Uh, also, don't forget to work in multiple areas at once. Well, not really at once, but as you're moving across the canvas, make sure you're using the same color in different areas of the canvas or the drawing surface. This gives you color harmony throughout the work. And color harmony. We'll get into maybe some color theory and some color harmony talks in the future. As the mids get layered up, go back and darken the darkest areas. Don't use black though. Use crimson with sap green or blue and burnt sienna to add a richer darkness. This will sometimes look very black, but it will have warm or cool connotations in the surface of the painted area. This adds visual interest 
because it's not just a flat black. I'll also get into another video where I talk about how I do not use black for the most part. Do this also with the lights. Warm areas add some yellow or some raw umber to white. In cool areas add blue. Push and pull the paint again and use thin layers to give the illusion of depth. It will brighten, especially the light areas, thin coats, thin coats over thin coats will add kind of a glowy aspect to the paint. Especially if you're using gel mediums in acrylic, I do have a video, I'll uh, put a link up here on how to use gel mediums to improve your acrylic paint. But if you're using oils, glazing over and over will add that same kind of vibe. In the end, I add some light blue to add visual interest. Uh, this also gives this kind of cool cast light that can be very interesting, adds movement. Um, uh, you could also add, hell, light greens um, to add some cool, cool areas into the uh, crevices or the concave parts. It'll also let the uh, eye jump around quite a bit. So I think that's all I want to say on, on how to do this. If anything didn't make sense or you want me to clarify something, uh, make a comment below and I will be more than happy to talk about that. Or if, if you have some techniques for painting morels that you think are helpful, why don't you send, uh, write what you like to do to make them more realistic also. So I hope you enjoyed this nice little goofy abstract painting. Um, it's just something I, I, I'm doing in the sketchbook. By adding some depth in your painting, the morale will look more realistic, even if you're working more painterly or impressionistically. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, the other morale painting will be posted as soon as I get it done. You can see it right there. That's where it's at. I'm going to work on that uh, this week sometime. And I'll have that video out at some point soon, I hope. Because God knows I've been slacking. All right. I should also say that a little abstract thing I just finished here. This is using the same re reference, but the whole reference, and it was a photo I did. I will post the references, look in the description below, uh, so you can also paint with me. Well, maybe not with me, but you can paint from the same reference. And if you do, please comment below where I can find it so I can uh, see what you did. That'd be awesome. Also, don't forget, do all the things. If you like this channel and want to see more, there'll be more mushroom paintings. There'll be portrait paintings. I have to finish this thing up because I started this before I started my YouTube channel. This has to get done. Uh, and it's been sitting long enough. Let's see if we can get this thing done. Peter McKinnon, Chris Howe. You don't have the best hair on YouTube. Just letting you know.